Brought to you by... Across the spectrum of horror cinema, there have always been films that carry with them the burden of curse. While some are thought to have caused the deaths of those involved in its creation, others have taken on a more macabre and everlasting legacy. If you are an active fan of the horror genre, it's likely that at some point in your travels throughout the vast history of films, novelizations, podcasts, and comics, you've come across the concept of the true cursed film. I'm not speaking of ones like The Exorcist or Poltergeist. I'm referring to the idea that a film could hold a power beyond the visual or emotional effect that it causes its viewers. In many forms of storytelling, even in some beliefs, there are films that exist out there that have the ability to cause the deaths of those who watch them. Such is the case with Antarum. It is said to be cursed. In 1988, a movie theater in Budapest that was screening the film burnt to the ground causing the deaths of the 56 people who were in attendance. Following this incident were the inexplicable deaths of a number of film festival programmers that had received Antarum as a submission, and died shortly after watching it. These events have created a belief that watching Antarum will kill you. Else Films has successfully tracked down a sole copy of the film and packaged it for public release. The film is about a young boy and girl that enter the forest and dig a hole to hell. As one programmer observed of Antarum, you don't watch the film. The film watches you. This presentation opens in a similar style and format to something like Lake Mungo or the Poughkeepsie Tapes, playing as a documentary that depicts factual accounts about a cursed reel of celluloid. This documentary style is what is used to set the stage for the film that follows. The first widely distributed version of Antarum. For me, as someone who watches a lot of these things, it isn't difficult for me to tell when a film is emulating a 70s aesthetic as opposed to actually being a 70s film. No matter how great the film transfer is, to my recollection, one has never looked this clean. That being said, this film does promote an extreme attention to detail. It is gorgeously and meticulously captured to emulate that period aesthetic to create a visually impactful presentation. Making use of subliminal imagery, this spectacle is littered with images that are literally etched throughout scattered frames. Faces faded into wide, enthralling backdrops, and symbols scratched into various frames that flow along perfectly with the various glitches in the film, light flares, and film burns, all help to sell the charm of the period. Somehow the film's atmosphere is warmly inviting and utterly enveloping. It draws you in with its ominous, lingering camera techniques, trapping you in a building tension and dread, while a haunting and droning score carries us through beautifully framed sequences, blending with an enchanting, melodic vocal arrangement. The film's narrative structure is kept very simple, to an almost dark storybook level which I think helped in further creating the haunting atmosphere even more. It grounds us on a level of childlike wonder, as the dark forces descend upon our characters the deeper they dig through the many levels of their torment. This was one of the few films that I've ever seen that truly captures the satanic cultish vibe. It's a tone that creates a perfect feeling of unease, making this an experience that you can't feel completely comfortable in. Our story is broken into chapters that serve to bookmark each level of the abyss that our characters slip deeper into, building a bridge in our minds to such classic tales as Dante's Divine Comedy, and allowing us to follow them into the darker levels of hell. 
to face the very demons that they have been in some way running away from. For me, this is a film that not only captured the tone and essence of a period in cinema in which I thoroughly love, but it elegantly told a whimsically woven story that is saturated by a darkness that has taken hold. It is the story of a child and his older sister, as she attempts to ease the pain of his loss by taking him on a journey of her own making, one that is meant to help him find peace, but that ultimately leads the both of them into damnation. This is a film that I watched with some friends, and just by their initial reactions, I could feel that it did not resonate the same way with them as it did with me. So, with the right person, I feel that this will create an experience that I think it is meant to. One that will draw you in over its slow progression and entrance you in the allure of its ancient spell. Now, like I said, it was clear to me that this is a film that was made now but is meant to look and feel like a true 70s film. And there are only a few, in my opinion, that have truly captured that essence. Though we as rational minds would look at a concept like this and assume its realism is nothing more than the fabrication of a creative mind, it's far more intriguing to me to speculate on the notion that something of this nature could possibly exist. Imagine, for example, a scenario in which you are purchasing a lot of VHS tapes for your collection off eBay, or maybe at a yard sale, and one of them turns out to be a strange, unmarked black tape that houses horrors beyond imagining. Wouldn't that be something extraordinary? Hey friends, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video and you would like to see more like it, please consider supporting ETF on Patreon, where every donation goes toward making new content for your enjoyment. But that's gonna be all for now. Until next time, stay safe and keep embracing film.